I am too busy studying for the big physics competition, baboon. Ah, oh, come on, come on, swinging me. I'm sorry, monkey, but I am busy with my physics. You can't do it because you is too short and you is a busy. <laughs> this was supposed to just be a quick video about the series finale, but it turned into a whole retrospective and I didn't feel like rewriting anything. So here. <laughs> Alright, so quick history lesson. In 1995, Cartoon Network launched a program that allowed for writers and artists alike to pitch, create, and showcase potential animated shows to lead the network into the next generation. This proved to be mad successful as their studio at the time, Anna Barbera, was already responsible for probably like 90% of the shows on the channel at the time. So it made sense to use it to produce a new batch of shorts as well. With the initiative, a new set of cartoons would be piloted and eventually greenlit into its own series for the coming years as they were filled. Cartoon cartoons! Cartoon cartoons! Cartoon cartoons. Yo, take a shot every time you hear cartoon in this video and I swear your liver will not make it to the morning. The cartoons that would end up getting greenlit would include Dexter's Laboratory, Johnny Bravo, the Powerpuff Girls, Courage the Cowardly Dog, The Groom Adventures of Billy and Mandy, the story of that one I'll get to in another video, and most relevant to this joint, cow and chicken. Mama had a chicken. Mama had a cow. Dad was proud. He didn't care how. You know, when I was a kid and we had Comcast on demand at my house, for whatever reason, this was the show I'd always put on. Which is crazy in hindsight because not a knock, but looking back, this show was gross, dude. So, my dear, you want to work on my milk farm, hmm? Oh, it would be an honor to squirt for you. Oz! Like, it was common knowledge that there was a sense of mindlessness in Cartoon Network shows like these, but to say that this was the Ren and Stimpy of the channel is criminally accurate. Created by David Feist, the show is centered on the adventures of a cow, and a chicken, and their friends and their parents, and a red guy named, uh, the red guy. Hello! It's me, the devil. I stand for all that is bad. <laughs> also, I'm naked. <laughs> this is what you clicked on this video for, right? Expert historical analysis right here. Defunct land might as well be rolled in their fucking graves. Here comes Mr. Hema, am I right? The show lasted from 1997 to 1999 with 52 episodes, or 104 seven-minute segments. But wait, Mr. Hema. That only covers 14 minutes of a show and not the typical 22 minutes. Nerd! For a long time, episodes of animated shows would follow a three seven minute short format. I'm not 100% sure why. I've looked it up and asked a few friends and the only reason I could deduce is that it was just cheaper and you know, a shorter time allowed for more room for the animation itself. But this was the standard for cartoons for decades and it's why you'd often see old Cartoon Network shows follow three shorts worth of an episode rather than the usual one or two that you'd see nowadays. With some of the early cartoon cartoons though, what they do to fill out the time slot was produce a supporting segment to round out the show. This was the reason for those Justice Friends and Dial M for Monkey shorts in the first season of Dexter's Lab. Thanks, Major Glory! Don't thank me, thank for the What? My friend, For Cow and Chicken though, their supporting segment featured IR Baboon, a big star cartoon, and... I am Weasel! God damn, that was a long setup, huh? I Am Weasel started as the secondary show for Cow and Chicken, but eventually spun off into its own series once Cow and Chicken wrapped. Really think about that though, how the fuck you let the B show outlive you, Cow and Chicken? They'll out here eating pork butts and taters and shit while they're out here taking your time slot. If y'all don't handle them, you can't let Usher do that to you. Ah, right. We're talking about cartoons here. <laughs> The first season of I Am Weasel featured a much more centered and tied down plot in comparison to its sister show. Meet IR Baboon. IR Baboon is a dumbass. But every time he gets his chance to shine, here comes this nigga I Am Weasel ready to play fucking hero and help out so everyone likes him. Y'all know that guy. Like, y'all know that guy? The one who just has everyone as his friend and he can't do a thing wrong? He's just so fucking perfect and everyone meat rides him for it? Like, you could be talking to that one baddie? Yeah, that's the one. Then one day that guy pops up and she's running up to him giving him a big ass hug and the next thing you know he's cuddling her up from behind in front of hundreds of millions of people worldwide. How the fuck did I reach the implication that this cartoon weasel is Usher? Point is, I am weasel is just perfect and this man baboon just wanted his spotlight bro. He never could get it though. Bless his ass. Bless his big stupid red baboon ass. <laughs> Your genius to create the bridge Lincoln car was to Mexico instead of to France. Fam, even when the monkey does his job, 
The other fucking animal wins. Is this a metaphor or something, man? No, seriously. Is there a deeper message we're not supposed to know here? Let me cook, okay? I'm recording this on Black History Month. When the second season hit, they decided to retool the show a bit. First things first, they switched up the art style just a bit to match up with the cow and chicken look. That's because they made both shows part of the same universe, allowing for crossovers with the lore that I Am Weasel was just canon in the cow and chicken universe. Ah, smell that fresh air. See, you might think this is cute, but it's all fun and games before she kidnaps bro from the TV itself and turns him into Jabba the fucking hut with her pie. Play. The crossover of universes also made the red guy a regular on the series too, playing the troll more often than not. The show obviously isn't lore based, but in one of my favorite episodes of the show, season 4's I Am Clichéd, it's established that he's just kind of the director of the show? And action! Mr. Simeon. Ah! Only thing missing a kitchen sink. <laughs> Thanks, IR. Speaking of this, this actually shows the last and most notable change that started with the second season. It kind of just got rid of the plot. The whole format of Weasel and Baboon being enemies and Weasel's just perfect and can take no harm was thrown out the window and they kind of just started being more frenemies or whatever. No different from Cow and Chicken on their show. Now me personally, I'm not always big on the idea of shows where nothing matters and it's just random events with these characters, but I actually didn't mind this change in format at all. It opened the door to a whole new range of slapstick and general comedy by not necessarily dumbing down Weasel, but just taking away his perfection, where instead of being the hero, he's just kind of like the smart fool. So by using that as an open door to give Baboon more shine too, I feel like it really helped the range of creativity with the show itself. It's like when Tom wins at the end of episodes instead of Jerry, you know what I mean? It grounds the show and the likability of the main character if they're just perfect and get their way all the time. Except for Bugs Bunny. Bro fucked with an opera singer for like seven minutes and played the banjo over his dead body. This nigga's a super villain, bruh. So, these changes allowed for the show to stay alive even past the Cow and Chicken show and once it spun off into its own series, it stayed strong for about another year and a half before getting canned. In its time though, they did episodes parodying fairy tales, pop culture, and other shows as a whole, all while having a more off-color and slapstick style of humor rather than Cow and Chicken's grosser, grungier, in-your-face humor style. Except for when Red Guy's on there, that nigga's a walking ass joke waiting for people to roll their eyes at. <laughs> Terrible culprit is on the loose! Someone is stealing everyone's pants. It's because he walks around with no pants and has his ass out like the baboon also with a red ass. Are you laughing yet? By the way, if it seems like I've been talking about the show objectively first, that's by design. I try to wait until talking about IR Baboon in regards to the reworked show because outside of not hating Weasel as much, Quite frankly, he doesn't really change much. He's still a dumb, grammatically incorrect monkey with a red ass, but what's funny about that is, that's the point. <laughs> Throughout the show, everyone else around him changed in the sense that they just got dumber by association as the show went on. Even Weasel, who would criticize Bro for being stupid, ended up being even more easily fooled and inefficient. Like when he tried to tell off a big ass robot for not doing what it was programmed to do. Now get back to work, you lazy rust bucket. <laughs> This episode was funny as hell too though, because he straight up just socks the piss out of IR at the end. Like damn, Weasel, you got it like that? Does Worf got it like that? Apart from just a genius factor though, the only difference between Weasel and everyone else though, he actually notices that everyone else around him was also getting dumber as time went on too. Even you. Yeah, you. Think about it. Those of you who've watched the show, who'd you laugh at more? Perfect ass know-it-all I am weasel or dumbass slapstick bound IR baboon? It may seem like this is just happenstance too, but to prove myself right, let me point you to the final episode of the series. Season 5's I Are Legend. See, I told you I was gonna get there, didn't I? In a parody of the book, and apparently, uh, no, no. I am is all alone with everyone else in society just gone, vanished, disappeared. disappeared.
Also, fam, I didn't know where else to put this in my notes, but why is everything this nigga Weasel says so wordy? He's like a walking, talking exposition. It's kind of hilarious. Isn't it grand, I are? Cliff diving in Acapulco. Come, my simian pal. Let us execute perfect swan dives into the brilliant blue Pacific below. Madam, I am a full-grown weasel with a PhD in subatomic particle physics. I am only doing this to please my half-wit friend. Utterly. This sadness envelops me like an envelope of sadness. Such abject loneliness I would not curse upon my worst enemy if I only had one. <laughs> Bro's talking so much about so many different things. You think he's me or something? Like, what's going on? Once he sees that he's not the only person there because IR and the red guy are there too, after messing around the city a little bit, Weasel ends up figuring out what's going on in what may be the smartest bit I could have ever seen coming. Isn't this what our show is on? Follow me. <laughs> this is insanity. Everybody's watching me. Yeah, so I am on a log over here. Realized that his show was the thing that was keeping everyone inside instead of enjoying the outside world. And of course, the smartest person among everyone else, the one who noticed everyone was getting dumber as time went on, was the one to realize that by being part of the show, he was part of the problem. So he straight up quits the show and tells the viewers to go live their own lives instead of getting their intelligence or lack thereof from shows like this. It kind of reminds me of the same sentiment from that other video I did about Phineas and Ferb that doing so well in the analytics. I will end my show now for I am Weasel. I wish you wouldn't, then I'd be out of work. Well, all that alone would have been an amazing way to close out the show, but everyone should flood out of their house right about now. It's time for the I Your Baboon Show. Dog. I've seen this episode more times I can count on both hands, but every time I see this part, I can't help but laugh, son. Nobody gave a fuck about this man Weasel quitting the show because at this point, it wasn't even his show anymore, bruh. Just like I mentioned earlier, that nigga IR Baboon was the real star because he's the one everyone remembers. The big dumb ape with the big red ass. All that slapstick his idiotic ass got caught up in. All the times you laughed. All the times I laughed, bro. This dude I am wasn't talking about the cow and chicken world's audience only becoming dumber. He was talking about everyone who watched the show. Shit, he was talking about me. I'm the one making a whole video about I am fucking weasel. Shit, y'all are watching this too, so by proxy, he's talking about y'all. This damn show, man. They got us. <laughs> well, I guess it's dummies one, smart guys zero. So... I won't lie, I had no intentions of this video being a whole ass history lesson on fucking I am Weasel. I just wanted something to make a video on before I started going into production on a much longer video like this down the line, and I really like this episode, honestly. But researching this was fun, man, and a lot of this stuff I already knew, because I'm kind of a television buff when it comes to shit like this anyway, so I thought it'd be fun to just make a video about and put out in the world. I personally don't have a big overarching moral or lesson myself this time, but with a message like that finale had, I'll just let the homie Weasel tell him himself. Go outside and live. I can't keep you all prisoners like this. I quit. Okay, you can turn off your sets now.